Yeah. Hey, welcome back to Shane's Main Shop. Just doing a little troubleshooting video. We got this uh, indirect water heater and it's heated from uh, the boiler in the other room. So what we have um, found is it's not heating the hot water. So we have cold water going in from the well, comes out and goes to the house after it's heated. These two pipes here come and go and return back to the boiler. Uh, so we fire the boil up, make sure this zone comes on. So it's circulating the water through this and water comes in hot, goes back hot. So we know it is going through the coil properly because it's returning very hot. You can't touch the pipes. So we're at a loss as to why are we not getting heat? Uh, water does go through this fine and go up through the house. So we know we're getting water through the system. So the only thing we could think of is the coil is plugged. Well, we just went and unbolted the coil and we're gonna go ahead and slide this out. Actually, we already did slide it out part way. And um, we did, we, I was correct, it is plugged. So this will have to be cleaned and we'll put it back together and see if we can get some heat out of it. So we, you, know, you should actually cut these pipes. We just want to do a quick fix because we actually thought about just tearing this whole water heater right out of here. Uh, but uh, I'm going to pause the video for a minute here. We'll get this out the rest of the way. But you can see all that sludge caked around this coil. So the hot water is going through that coil, but it can't transfer it to the tank water because it just, you know, it's, it's trying to go through so much sludge. All right, it's been a couple of weeks, but we're back here at the water heater. And what we did is we just shut the water off to the system, cut these, uh, and slid some shock bite valves on here. So now you can see we're completely disconnected. So the next thing will be to remove the whole um, coil out of the water heater and we're going to clean that gunk off of it and start to reassemble it so we can uh, see if we can get this thing working. So we got the uh, coil all out of the water heater and we're just rinsing. You can see some of the stuff off. I'm going to have somebody else spray it but you can see all that brown stuff coming off there and I'll stand back and you spray it and hopefully once we clear some of that up the heat can transfer better. Crud coming off of it. You want to be careful not to bend all the fins all up when you're doing this, but there's definitely a lot of buildup. You can see how dirty the water is coming out. So we'll get this thing cleaned up, and you can see in the end, we'll see all the brown. We're going to get all that rinsed off. See the chunks coming out? It should make a big difference. If you look down in there, you can see all the chunks down in there and stuff. So hopefully, once we get this thing all rinsed off, the heat will transfer through this coil a lot better. So we've got the coil pretty well rinsed out, as good as we're gonna get it. All the heavy sludge is definitely on it, off of it. It looks a lot better now. Uh, and it is, there is some sediment in the bottom of there, but we're not gonna mess with that. We just wanna see if we can get this back together and get the heat to transfer um, through and to the water here and so we can heat up the domestic hot water. So we'll be putting this back together here very shortly. All right, so we got it pretty well cleaned off. Let's gonna go ahead and gently get it slid back in there. And uh, we won't bolt it up yet because we're gonna cut it at the top. We're actually gonna slide it back out. Hook it yeah, up we will. Side. So uh, but we want, what we need to do is find out the height we need here for these valves we put in now. So we're gonna make some marks, cut these pipes. We're gonna hook them up and then we can use the flexibility of the PVC or the PEX pipe to then slide this thing back in there where it needs to go and then we will bolt it up. So I guess we won't show all that. Basically, we're just gonna cut this off, make this connection, slide it back out, slide it back in and bolt it up. So we'll, we'll show you the finished product here in just a couple minutes. All right, so we got them, uh, we got the pipes locked into the shark bites. Not the best option to do, but I didn't wanna have to drain the whole system to solder it. So, and I think you saw earlier why we did this. We just slid these on quick to save the water in the heating system that's still currently being used. This allowed us to work on the water heater and just leave these off temporarily. So we got it slipped back in now and then we just got to get it bolted up. And then we got to fill the water heater full of water and then uh, test the system out. All right, so we have it all bolted back together. What we got now is the relief valve open and we turned the feed on slow. And we're now filling the tank with domestic water. And we got this open so the air can um, come out. All right, and after we fill the Y heater up, we just come up here and we're just getting the air out of the system. There's obviously some air in it. And we're just doing the two valves that are closest to the water heater. 
to limit the amount of air going through all the pipes. So we're going to let this run until it clears all up and there's no air popping out of it. And then we'll know the system's full of water. All right, so it appears we got all the air out of the domestic side of it. Now we got to uh, bleed the air out of the boiler side. And the good thing is we don't see any leaks around here. We've got to double check this. So that's good. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into the boiler room and we're going to shut off all the other zones to the house. Then we'll come out and turn these two on and bleed just this line. So we're going to do that next. All the other zones, and I've shut this one as well, um, but I am forcing water through that particular one by having a hose hooked to this side, allowing water to go in one end and go around the loop and come out here, hopefully forcing as much air out of the system as possible. And we just keep an eye on the pressure and uh, just keep running it until we get the air out. Looks like we got most of it at this point. We're gonna run it a little bit longer just to make sure. You can actually hear a little bit of the air still coming through. So we got the boiler turned on and we got just this one calling for heat. And you can see that by the flashing green light. So we're just gonna wait now for hot water to come in one side, go out the other, and then we know it's making a complete loop through the coil, which uh, for a recap, we were not having trouble with that before. Water was flowing through the coil, no problem. It just wasn't transferring from the coil to the domestic water inside the tank. And that's what we're hoping changes today. And I can already feel warm water going through. So uh, that's working. Now we just got to wait and it's going to take a while. So we got 40 gallons of water here that just came out of the well to get heated up. And uh, hopefully this will fix the system. The water going in before, before we did this repair, the water going in was scorching hot and relatively soon after it was coming out scorching hot, which told us it was making it through the coil. Uh, the difference today is it's still going in very hot, almost you can't hold your hand on it, and it's been doing that for a while, but the water coming out, the pipe now is just warm, which means it's losing some of its heat to the water in the tank, which is what we want. So it should not be coming out in the beginning the same temperature. You figure the water in that tank is 55 degrees, so, of course, this water going in hot is going to come out quite a bit cooler before, it, uh, you know, it goes back to the boiler. So now that it's actually doing that, we're seeing a significant difference in the temperature. It appears that the water is um, heating up inside the tank. Now, we'll know more once it's been running for a while because, it's, like I said, it's 40 gallons. Um, but before, with that sludge all built up on the coil, that was acting as an insulation. So the water is going in hot. And coming right back out hot but there is a definite significant difference in out in the temperature of these pipes now which is a very good sign that we're getting good heat transfer from that coil yeah you can't hold your hand on this one now that's yeah yeah <laughs> good so that's and this one here you can definitely hold your hand on it's warm but it's not hot this one here is hot good sign that's what we wanted to see some exciting news uh, my brother went upstairs turned on the hot water and lo and behold i immediately felt this getting warm so we are getting hot water out of the system now so that is a huge project out of our way and it is fixed and working very well so yeah the really the only issue was that coil was just all plugged up so now the water is going in hot transferring that heat to the domestic water and now we're getting it to the house before this was no matter how much um, we left this boiler running. This was still just cold water coming back out going to the house. So anyway, uh, yeah, if you have a water heater issue, similar system like this with a boiler that's hot, uh, heated off your oiler, uh, your oil boiler, then this could be the problem because there's multiple reasons why you could not have hot water. But in our case, this turned out to be the issue, a plugged coil. All right, thanks for swinging by Shane's Main Shop. Please like, subscribe, come back often for more videos. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one.